I'm concerned people have lost sight of character, integrity, courage, and honor, and instead worship celebrity. I'm concerned they revere a uniform with numbers, but disrespect a uniform with a badge. I'm concerned, and we're doing something about it. These are heroic Americans who walk among us, people who put themselves at risk for the benefit of others. It's been my great blessing to have spent most of my life in the company of heroes. Welcome to this Real American Heroes vid podcast. This show is all about real American heroes, the kind of people with whom I've spent nearly my entire life. I'm Oliver North, and yes, this is my beard, and it's going to remain on my face and, until we no longer have to shelter in place, or Betsy makes me shave, or Dr. Katz tells me I've got to get rid of it. We'll see. I call this our Press on America campaign, our mission, and Marines love having a mission, is to provide you with facts, straight scoop, on how to persevere in tough times. And we're certainly having tough times right now. So each of these vid podcasts are gonna put on experts with, for you willing to share their advice, their wisdom and experience to all America. Our guest today is Dr. Martin Katz, MD. He's in the front lines of the fight against the COVID-19 virus. He's also a double board certified physician in both family medicine and primary sports care. He's also a triathlon race developer and director, a team physician, a free clinic volunteer and does medical mission work. He's a preventive medicine activist, is the nicest way I could put it, with extensive experience in healthy living and disease prevention. And he works with athletes from elite to weekend warriors. He's currently the team physician for an endurance cycling team and he can beat the dickens out of me going uphill. Dr. Katz, welcome to our Press on America series. Let's start with the basics. I wanna make this personal. How vulnerable am I to COVID-19? Great question. And you've probably heard, and if, and if you haven't, I'm happy to define it. You've probably heard of this term called R0. And R0 is a value that's assigned to a disease to figure out how infectious, you know, how infectious it is. We've got to sort of figure out a couple of things. One is certainly we don't know enough about coronavirus yet. It's a fairly novel um, certainly very severe, significant virus. And there's a lot we're trying to figure out as you, you know, probably have realized things change day to day. Um, and we're hearing different values anywhere from one to four. Um, but it, it depends on a, a couple things. Certainly how uh, transmissible it is. So when a person gets infected, um, we want to know how long it is before they show symptoms uh, while being contagious. So if you're asymptomatic and contagious for an extended period of time, the R0 value is going to go up. If you now have the disease and you're very symptomatic and you didn't have much time to spread the disease, the R0 value is going to go down. And so we are hearing of people that are asymptomatic um, and able to transmit this virus and so that's going to increase that R0 value and, and going to increase your risk if you go out um, because there's going to be people walking around with um, who are able to uh, transmit the virus without having symptoms. And then this, there's this idea of droplets versus aerosolized. So how exactly is, is the virus being transmitted on droplets versus aerosolized? Droplets, a little heavier, it's going to be around six feet. So if you keep six feet away from people, You've got to be. You've got a pretty good chance. However, we also think that there's an aerosol component to this virus, and so that's further than six feet, right? So you realize if you're in a grocery store and you're a couple of aisles over from the um, sanitizers and such, the deodorants, you still smell them. That's aerosol, and that's further than six feet. So if, if it's able to be aerosolized, again, that's going to increase the R naught value. And then there's our ability to get infected. If we are a super healthy nation, uh, younger, not smoking, active, really taking care of our health, that's going to decrease the R0 value. As far as you specifically, you can answer that question. Each individual is different, um, and certainly how much you're getting out, if you're smoking, if you're really taking this thing seriously, um, we can hopefully decrease that R0 value. Well, since it all began, I started out with just like I am right now. 
And then I went to wearing gloves everywhere I went. Take the gloves off very carefully when I come out of a store and put them in the trash and get the other pair out. But masks are hard to get. Gloves are hard to get. Hand sanitizer is hard to get. So is this all of our best protection is not yet available again? In the, it's not just toilet paper they're out of. It's all this other stuff in, in the stores. So the answer is don't go out. Yeah, I mean, you know, I would say that is likely our best protection is uh, the social distancing at this point before we get more information. Um, you know, how that plays out is going to be interesting to see. You know, how long can we do this? How long are Americans willing to stay indoors? Um, and, and when I say indoors, it's relative. Obviously, if you have the opportunity to get outside in nature uh, while keeping social distance, um, you know, you can wave at people. You can certainly smile at people. Is there anybody who's actually immune? Do we know, that, for example, that someone who's had it, a light case of it, now has immunity from it? Yeah, in, in this country, we, we don't have access to antibody testing widespread at this time, but there are um, certainly people who have recovered, um, have had a light case. Actually, a, a, f a friend of a friend, I know the guy, he uh, was out in, in, he's an ENT, he was over in Kenya, and he came back, he was doing mission work over there. He uh, returned, uh, had positive confirmed COVID. So the testing on COVID is interesting. It's um, very good if you are test positive. We know that there's a good chance that you had the disease. Unfortunately, in some of these uh, testing at this case, we're, in this time, we're seeing a fair amount of false negatives. But again, if you, if you test positive, it's a, it's a pretty good chance that you do indeed have the disease. And he indeed tested positive. He had fairly mild symptoms. Fortunately, his family, he's got a young family, had fairly mild symptoms. Um, and so he recovered and is doing well. So we might not even know, for example, why I came back from our trip to Israel. We got here back in the first week of February. Right shortly thereafter, several of us who are on that flight back uh, developed a fairly severe upper respiratory issue, a coughing, you know, you cough up that green gunk out of your lungs, you know something's not quite right. Mild temperature, not too bad. Is it possible that I had it and I'm now immune to it? Yeah, it's absolutely possible. Uh, you know, and again, the only way we're going to know is the antibody testing, which unfortunately, again, is not widely available. Certainly in other countries, they're doing the antibody testing. They're doing some very interesting things, looking for immunity in people who we know have had it and recovered being able to draw out that immunity from people uh, via blood work, of course, and then being able to uh, give that to people who are uh, severely ill through what's called uh, plasmapheresis. And some of those people are showing signs of recovery. I believe they're doing that up in New York now as well. And uh, some good results coming of that. And they're even doing that now for healthcare workers, because obviously uh, healthcare workers are on the front line. We're ex being exposed day in, day out, certainly the, the guys who are taking care of uh, folks on ventilators or just the, this uh, BiPAP, uh, helping oxygen get delivered. Uh, those guys are really on the front lines. Look, I've seen you in other broadcasts, I've seen you in other podcasts talking about ways in which you can improve we, not you, because you're pretty healthy, but the rest of us. What can we do to improve our immune systems to make us resistant to this kind of thing happening? Give us, give us a couple of tips on what you're recommending to your patients. Yeah, we, we don't have a ton of time, so I'll try to keep this brief. But, you know, this is a pretty prolonged answer. I'm a huge fan of, of people taking their own health very seriously. Um, we can't wait. We can't wait for the government. We can't wait um, at this point for the miracle drug or the miracle answer. Vaccines probably going to be coming out 12 to 18 months, some say maybe longer. Uh, there are some concerns making sure it's a safe vaccine. So we want to actively pursue this. Um, this is not a passive thing. And certainly, you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom out there. And so if we can uh, take some of, the, some of the control and do it ourselves, that would probably make us feel better about the situation, make, make ourselves feel better about ourselves. Uh, certainly, uh, the nutrients you feed your body, so nourishment, I think, is incredibly important. Lots of phenomenal studies uh, out there about uh, people who eat more fruits and vegetables, specifically cruciferous vegetables. What kind of vegetables? 
<laughs> sorry, uh, cruciferous. Um, so that's the broccoli, the cauliflower, the kale. There's a, a significant amount of cabbage is a great one. There's a lot of uh, cruciferous vegetables. Uh, that's, a, that's an easy Google search for you. You know, nutrients in general, what we're looking for is what, what are called phytonutrients and flavonoids. These are the things that give plants, vegetables, fruits, their color, their pigment. So if you're eating a fairly dull plate, if you're going out and getting fast food, that's pretty much a monochromic plate. That plate looks pretty brown or tan. It's not got a lot of color. And I don't consider ketchup adding color to it. Um, that is not a vegetable. Look, at you got me started on a product that, that you helped develop. Just, to, to, you know, just give, it, give us a, 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 a tutorial on how effective that is and what makes it so effective in terms of improving the immune system. <laughs> so, yeah, this, this again is actually in the cruciferous vegetables. So it's uh, broccoli sprouts. Interestingly, the mature broccoli plant doesn't have very much of this molecule in it. Um, and so we, uh, as a company, were fortunate enough to discover um, sulfurophane, but we didn't discover it. We, we uh, developed a stabilized form of sulfurophane. The, the folks up at Johns Hopkins discovered it back in 92. This is a phenomenally powerful molecule, the sulfurophane. Uh, folks have described it as the most potent turn on of what's called the NRF2 axis. This is a, a lot of jargon, I apologize, but uh, this is a molecule that goes down to your genome, your genetics, your DNA, and tells it to turn on a significant, about 200 antioxidants. And if you know much about antioxidants, those are the things that help balance uh, inflammation and things that cause that can cause diseases in your body. So this is a phenomenally powerful molecule that we were happy to be introduced to. We're the uh, first American company to be able to actually stabilize the end product. We've also been looking at it as it affects viruses. Um, again, it has not been studied in coronavirus. And again, I'm, I'm I am a physician, but I'm not your physician um, in the general sense. Um, so obviously speak to your physician about, uh, you know, whether you should or should not be doing this, but sulfurophane has a, uh, an impressive um, ability to control a protease called TMPRSS. And that's a big word, but this, this protease, this protein on the cell wall of your respiratory cells, so the lung lining, helps the coronavirus get into the cell. And if you can control that protease, uh, limit its ability, uh, you're going to limit uh, coronavirus's ability to get in, into your cell and replicate. And that is a great thing to be able to do. Give our, give our viewers an opportunity to, to find out how you get the sulforaphane. Go ahead and plug it. Yeah, so uh, certainly our company is www.broccoli.com. Uh, you can go on there, you can order. We wanted to actually extend a offer to healthcare workers Obviously, we're all in this together. Um, our healthcare workers are frontline. They are working extremely hard. And so we wanted to extend uh, an a offer to them. It's available now. Uh, the code is immune25. So if you go to broccoli.com and put in immune25, so if you know somebody on the front lines, please let them know about this. We're going to limit it to two bottles per customer. Uh, unfortunately, we, don't, we do have a limited supply. At this point, we're trying to do what we can to increase supply, as is everybody. And so there's, all, there's only 500 bottles available for this um, code, Immune25. Okay, so one last question. All right, and it's, this is personal again. Right. Do you like my beard? So, so that's a... <laughs> that's a <laughs> we have something called the Fresh Air Clinic um, yeah. at the office. Uh, we're donning personal protective equipment. And thanks again to uh, patients who've uh, uh, made some masks. Again, we're Americans are incredibly enterprising. We're getting out and doing things. And, and that's why I think this is so helpful because we're a great nation made of great people who can do great things. Um, and uh, so we're donning all this personal protective equipment, including protecting our hair. Uh, so we were actually wear a, um, something over our head and certainly we're wearing masks and actually a face shield over that mask, so almost two masks. Um, and those masks just don't fit as well if we've got facial hair. So we're actually, um, if, if, you're getting, if you do get out on the front lines or if you're having to get out and wear a mask, 
Colonel, as good as you look with that beard, you may need to think about getting rid of it, certainly if you have to go out for an urgent... Uh... I got you, Doc. I got you. Okay, I'll get rid of it. But <laughs> ask me, I was going to keep it until this whole thing was over, and I figured it'd be about two feet long by the time we finished this thing. Dr. Katz, thank you for the rock-solid advice. We're grateful for your willingness to serve on the front lines in this fight for our lives. And folks, remember, we've got this podcast is a regular thing, so stay tuned. And until we come again, remember, Semper Fidelis is more than a slogan for U.S. Marines. Always faithful is a way of life. Now, America, press on. <laughs>